All right, you guys, so we're back with another radio for the from iDoing. So we're going to be putting it in this 2019 Forerunner today. This is a complete plug and play kit. It actually also works with the JBL system as well. So, like I said, this is a 2019 Forerunner Limited, so it has the JBL system and everything. And this should be plug and play compatible with that. So, opening up the box. Comes with all your wiring harnesses, microphone. And what I really like about iDoing is they build their radios into pretty much like the factory bezel. So all you have to do is literally just take out the plastic trim. This fits right in there and you don't have to worry about any additional um, bezel requirements or anything like this. This will snap right into the um, original clips. So let's hop in the car and start taking that trim apart and getting that one ready. Alright, so in the bag they also include some trim tools. Pretty simple. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is pop off the plastic trim down here. Um, on this car, it's really hard to like kind of get to them. I'm assuming that these plastic trim pieces have never been replaced on this car or taken apart because the clips are very stiff. But I kind of just pried from the back right here and they finally popped off this one actually flung out and then got this one and now we're gonna have to take out the climate controls so that way we can get access to the bottom of the radio and then when we take out these climate controls i just kind of pried up from the back here with a with one of these plastic pry tools and that loosened the one side we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and that'll loosen your climate controls which will give you access to those bottom screws right there. All right, once you get all those loosened, this radio should come loose. All right, now that we got this loose, there's like 500 connectors back here that we're going to have to take apart and then we're going to have to start transferring stuff onto the back of here from here. So we'll just start unplugging all these connectors. You really won't get them mixed up because there's literally like none of these same connectors. And then there's like a wire It's like a wire harness clip up in the corner over here. That's a crimp. And that's everything off the old radio right here. Now we're gonna have to transfer like the air vents, the panic or the hazard buttons and stuff like that. And then we can start plugging everything back in. And something else I noticed too when I was disconnecting all these harnesses, there's six connectors in the back that I'm pretty sure um, this bottom one right here is the um, nav, the stock nav, and they literally just harness from the nav unit to the radio. So this is a harness we're most likely not going to need to use, but if we do, I'll just keep it on the stock one for now and see if I need it on here, but I don't think so because this doesn't carry over the stock nav. It ends up using like Apple CarPlay or something like that, so you don't need stock nav so and also we're gonna need to like i said the hazard switch um there's a harness that plugs in here and then comes out over here for this harness right here so this is gonna have to come off of here so that way we can plug it in there and then it'll just plug into the switch here but the stock radio like had it like clipped on the side like very cleanly but with this, we're not going to be able to use the side bracket, so it's just going to have to be another wire that's in the back right there. But yeah, we'll have to disconnect this, 
which looks like there's some type of clip down there where my finger is. We're going to have to squeeze that and pull this out. And then we'll be able to mount it there. And then should be simple. And then as for the air vents, I'm not sure. I think they might clip out. Or there are some little screws. Um, not sure if we're going to need the little screws or not. But I think they just clip out. Alright, and something I'm going to do before I actually transfer everything over, I'm just going to plug this in real quick. And just make sure the everything on the radio is functioning properly, so, um, so I don't waste my time and then there's something wrong. But yeah, I'm going to plug this in. There's two harnesses here. You're going to plug into the back of the radio. And then you're going to have this as well, which I believe this does a lot of the um, computer stuff for the car. And we're just going to match up the plugs on the back to the plugs that are on the radio. I'm going to lay a microfiber towel down so I don't scratch the screen up. And like I said, it's pretty hard to mix and match these plugs up because they only plug in one way. And this comes with a bunch of other things if you're going to add like a sub, amp, front camera. And this also comes with stuff to add your GPS and stuff like that. For the like um, stock nav, if you're not gonna use like Apple CarPlay and stuff. But I got majority of everything plugged in. All right, well the radio turned on. So that's a good thing. Alright, so it sounds like we don't have the antenna hooked up yet for the radio. So I'm just going to try to hook Bluetooth up real quick just to make sure that is working. Alright, so it looks like I connected. Alright, now I'm trying to connect Apple CarPlay real quick. Like I said, just to make sure a lot of this stuff works. Alright, so it seems like we still got a couple other things that we got to trigger, figure out. Um, because the backup camera is not working. It doesn't look like the steering wheel controls are linking up. Um, I tried to do the steering wheel teach, and I don't know if I did something wrong. All right, and there's also a couple other harnesses that I didn't see. Um, there's this gray wire right here that goes to this connector, and then there's a female USB to USB, which I'm going to assume these go together, and then this is going to go in the back of the radio. I'm not exactly sure what this was going to be for, but it might be hopefully steering wheel controls or something. So this has four. Alright, so there's that one. And then there's this other one right here, which I think this is probably the camera for the backup camera. And it's going to plug into one of these yellow harnesses. I'm not sure which one it is, but we'll have to play with that. Alright. And then we'll plug it into the first one. Oh, and then also the antenna um, is right here. This is going to get plugged in to right there. So we're going to have to plug that in. And now, hopefully, we have achieved all the stuff we were missing. So, let's just turn the car on for one second. Let's try to put it in reverse real quick. Okay, so that's not. So let's try the other cable. Let's try reverse again. Okay, so we got camera, but it looks all messed up. So. All right, so on this, so on this one, you're gonna if you do have a problem with your camera, you're gonna go to settings up at the top, and then you're gonna go to camera, and then I chose NS NTSC, and that fixed my camera, and now you can actually see the back of it. So we got the camera working. So now let's double check um, the steering wheel controls. Let's try to pair this up.
All right, so I have gotten everything to work on the steering wheel, the steering wheel controls, Apple CarPlay, the radio, everything. And I just want to show you, these are the plugs that I needed to plug in. Um, there's a one plug right here, a little plug right here, and then this plug right there. Those are the only ones I needed to plug in the back of it. And then there was the camera plug that is going to go into cam in right here. I'm not sure, the other one might say something, it's wrapped around a a zip tie, but I had I had them switched up so I just had to switch it over to the other one, and now the backup camera works. Um, pretty much every harness was used in the radio compartment except for this little one and this little one. I'm not sure what these do, um, but there's no spot on the radio and there's no harnesses for those to fit. So those two are the only two that are not going to be used and then this one that's up here is going to be for your hazard switch um, when we swap them over from the old one to the new one so i'm going to unplug all this now that i know the radio works everything is working good we just got to get all the air vents the hazard switch and then we can mount everything back up all right so we're going to swap these air vents over and it looks like we're going to need to get access to these screws because they're going to screw in to right here so you're gonna need a pretty small Phillips screwdriver and then we will twist these loose and don't lose the screws. And when you get these little screws off, they hold on this little front plate right in front of the climate control or the air vent. That's what that, those are holding on. Um, then you wanna take those out and not lose them. Are there very tiny screws, two on each side, and then there's clips holding on all right, so there's gonna be clips down at the bottom here that are holding on these two little tabs. You're gonna to want to try to push them to the side and yank this out at the same time, and then these air vents will come out. All right, and then the hazard switch. There's gonna be these two little prongs that you're gonna to wanna to squeeze down and then push it forward. And that should be everything we need from this radio. And now we're just gonna take all this stuff and put on the new trim pieces. All right, and looking at these, um, this says right hand, the other one says left hand, so. I'm assuming the left one goes on the left and the right one goes on the right. So, I got both air vents in there. They look good. So now we're going to, well, I should have put the hazard switch in first, but that's fine. Put the hazard switch in. That just presses in. And now we got to put our little tiny plates on the front. All right, now we're putting these little tiny screws back in the holes. All right guys, so I got the air vents all back on, hazard switch, these little knob things back on. Everything seems pretty good, so now we can go plug everything back up behind the radio. All right, so I got everything plugged in the back of the radio. And then don't forget your, um, your hazard switch wire. And now we just kind of shove all this stuff behind the radio. Oh, you guys, something else I totally forgot to put in. There's this black plastic piece that goes right above the radio. And it's held in with two screws as well. So now that I got this black trim on, now we can push everything to the back. Because what is nice about these iDoing radios is they don't weigh a lot, so you don't even need to use factory brackets. They literally just clip in, and it's not going to go anywhere, especially when you put these other pieces on. It's just going to clip it in even tighter. Um, but that's pretty much this. I will go over a lot of the features on here and show you guys 
how to like use things, set up Apple CarPlay and stuff like that. So, but let me finish buttoning up this and then we will go over all the features on this radio. All right, you guys. So I got everything all buttoned up. Everything's looking amazing. Like this radio looks so nice in here. Like this is like what this car needed like from factory. So like it fills in the space a lot more, looks nice. Plus this radio comes with knobs. So not a lot of these Android radios come with knobs. Like the one I put in my Corolla and stuff like that does not have knobs. It has just the touch buttons to move it. But this also works with your um, volume control. So you can turn your volume control with that. You can skip songs as well. So, um, and so, and people always ask every single time I put these in my cars, can you get access to the car um, settings? And yes, you got all your like language, air conditioning stuff, um, light controls, like daytime running lights, headlamp sensitivity, headlamp off, auto timer off, all sorts of lighting things, your lock settings too, when you shift in the park, when you don't shift in the park, when you press your button twice, what does it unlock? It keeps all of those settings. It has all that stuff and it has more stuff as well. Um, if you want to mess with it or whatever. So, and then putting in reverse, we'll put in reverse. And you can see we're going reverse. The parking sensors do work. Um, that's what's making that beeping noise. The, the trailer hitch is making that go off. Um, and so, I mean, you got your normal Bluetooth to make calls. You got your Bluetooth to, um, listen to music if you want to uh, you got your normal radio you can program your stations and do everything like that everything works good um like i said the only thing i it might be on here so yeah this does not have the the, the offline maps put onto it if you wanted to you can put it on a little sd card and plug it into a little thing that comes with this but we don't need offline maps on here. We're just going to use um, Apple CarPlay. And so Apple CarPlay, all you have to do for Apple CarPlay or actually like wireless Apple CarPlay, you just have to connect to Bluetooth, um, which you'll just search for it or whatever. On This radio is specifically called um, CarKit Blink. You're going to connect to that, connect it, and now you can go, it'll say pair success once it pairs to your phone. And then they have a T-Link, which is the wireless Apple CarPlay thing. So they call it T-Link on here. So, and again, I'm connected wirelessly and I have my CarPlay all ready to go. I mean, settings, everything like that. So it's perfect. It works amazing, flawlessly. If you go to settings, you got your normal like radio settings. So you can like change just general things about stuff. Um, as well as um, when you do stuff with your air conditioner, it will pop up on here as well. Like you change the fan speed, it'll pop up. You change where the air is flowing, it'll change over there um, to your feet, defrost, feet and face, uh, the rear defrost, everything like that. So it all pops up on the thing as well. So the only thing I see that doesn't pop up is when you move your climate to change like the thing, this doesn't really change at all. So, but that's not even a big thing. Um, you can have door display. So when you open up a door, it'll pop up which door is open. Um, you can mess with any reverse settings you need to, display how you want it to look. You can connect it to Wi-Fi so you can use it like a normal tablet you would. So yeah, this has pretty much all the settings you would need plus way more than you need. But yeah, so, all the functions, I mean, on this radio work with the stock car. So, like I said, and it includes even more. So, if you guys got any questions or concerns about getting this radio, just comment down below if you have any questions. I will try to answer them the best I can. If not, you can always hit up iDoing on Instagram. And they usually will get back to you really quick. As well as help you answer any questions that you guys have. So... Um, then it also has your fuel history, um, like it tells you how many miles you have left for the gas and how well your MPG is. 
Um, but pretty much, I just like these radios just for Apple CarPlay, so. And just having wireless Apple CarPlay makes everything so seamless and really nice to have, so. Oh, and also I want to mention the sound quality on this radio versus the stock radio. I actually noticed it sounds pretty good. It has a little bit more low tones than what the stock radio had, but it does sound better than what it did before. So, And it did have the JBL system, so there is somewhat of an improvement on audio. And then also, too, the screen is like crystal clear. Like It's a very high-resolution screen. And I believe the screen size is a 9-inch screen or a 10... Actually, it's a 10-inch screen, I believe. But I will be putting links down below if you guys are interested in buying this. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button, and I'll see you guys next time.